Hello, welcome to episode 34 of the Harry Potter painting series. In this one we're doing Grindelwald's base. The main man will be coming along in a different tutorial later on down the line. Uh, it's just I've got a few other things on the on the back burner at the minute, so it may be uh, a couple of weeks until that one comes out. But in the meantime, we'll focus on this one. I started with a, just using a brush to get the blue flame effect, and then uh, I switched to an airbrush about halfway through after a, I realised how long it was going to take to actually get it done. Um, so don't worry about uh, if you haven't got an airbrush because I cover the, the brush technique in it as well. So yeah, hopefully I'll get something out of it. And uh, yeah, let's get straight on with it. Okay, so I had a quick practice here with the, the blues. And what you're trying to do is a flame effect. So you want to get lighter towards the tip. So I've put the, the mid-tone and a bit of the shadow in now and I'm going to start highlighting. So I need my... highlight colour which is probably just a sky blue with a little bit of white in it and it's quite thin and I'm just dragging it towards the top and I'll feather it at the bottom if I can if it's still yeah still workable and just build up the highlight so leave that dry. Give it a quick uh, blow. And I'll go in with the the white ink over the top. I'll feather that at the bottom. And basically, <laughs> that is it. I'm just going to replicate that process around the rest. So I've got my mid-tone here. I'll put my shadow in, in the, in, just into the grooves. Again it's quite thin. I don't want to go too dark there because that's supposed to be quite light up there. I'll put a shadow in there and then I can start highlighting with about 50-50 mix of the, the light blue and the mid blue. And we do want to keep your paint quite thin for this. Yeah, don't be in a rush to get a stark highlight straight away. You need to build it up slowly. white ink and if your paint dries before you can get into feather it just go for a tone darker let's go over the top and then feather that one I've lost my shadow there, so I'll put the shadow back in. You can go back and forth as many times as you want until you got the look that you're after. I've carried on going round. I thought um, this bit of the back here would be an interesting one to show you. And uh, do. Because um, I've put my what I've got as a mid-tone down. I'll let it dry and then I'm going to shade lighter now.
you will get a feel for where the where it will become lighter and where it, um, where the shadows are. Right. Let's go around that mid tone again with a, a lighter colour. And one of my highlight colours. And I'm just going to wet my brush now. And I'll start to feather it along the edges. While well, that's still dry, uh, still wet, I'll put that shadow back in. I'll wet my brush and blend the edges in. And then my white ink with a little bit of the, the light blue. I'm pulling the pigment up to the top. The good thing about having loads of tones on the palette, you can, you can pick a colour that fits exactly in next to the ones that you've already done. Just to keep uh, knocking it back and forth until you get a nice smooth finish. I'm going to go darker down the bottom now. I should have let it dry first. Shadow. to colour feather in that and a darker colour hopefully you'll see what I mean by starting to blend in the colours in I really should leave this bit dry before I go in because I'm starting to mess it up now. I'll give it a blast with the air dryer and I'll come back. So I said, uh, leaving it to dry is a good thing. <laughs> so you can see that we're starting to get a nice build up and a, a transition. So I'm going to carry on. Um, 
because the ultimate aim is to get like a, a really nice white point to it and you just work back down and progressively lighter colours until you get a nice blend every now and again I'll just put a bit of water on my brush and just feather it out push the pigment back up where it should be so that's the main technique so if you replicate that all the way around and on onto there as well um, you should be onto a winner and the, the good thing about it if when it dries you think ah, I don't like that bit you just go over it again and just keep building it up so um, I'm gonna carry on doing that and uh, see what it looks like just to show you now I've been working on this for the best part of 40 minutes now <laughs> and um, it's gonna take ages I think to do this but it's worth doing I think um, so yeah I'm gonna carry on and we'll, I'll come back um, after a while and uh, probably we'll make a start on the skull there all right see you in a bit apologies but I've, uh, I've skipped a step um, I'm carrying on with the base here um, adding the, the highlights uh, it's going okay but then I, I decided to do something different with the top so I applied some um, the have you seen that Citadel's Night Haunt Night Haunt Gloom Night Haunt Gloom they brought it out for the the spooks um, not so long ago um, that's a couple of coats on the top but what I'm doing now is using the airbrush I've got sky blue I've got sky blue coming through and um, I'm just starting to highlight the raised area so I'll carry on doing that. Um, let me refocus and make sure everybody gets it. Okay, so as I said, yeah, sky blue is in the airbrush. Just gonna test it there, see what kind of flow I've got. If any. I've got the pressure quite low. Ah, it's blocked. Um, and I'm just following the contours. I'll leave a little bit of shadow there. It's going to be a slow process, but um, hopefully it'll be worth it. I'm going to build up successive highlights on that now with just adding white to the, the sky blue. Yeah, I'm working my way around with um, sky blue with a little white in it now. Just pick out the raised areas again.
every now and again I'll spot something on the uh, on the face that needs a little blend so I'll give that a blast as well but it's starting to come now I'm going to add some more white to it and then we'll do another layer okay that's another highlight with some light blue added to it as you can see I'm trying to pick out areas now where I think the light will hit it more and that's in a nutshell that's that's all I'm going to do now is just keep adding a little bit more white to it and add in successive layers and try and get a try and get a nice blend um, I've been adding bits to the bottom as well so that's starting to come along quite nicely it's a lot easier with an airbrush than it is with a brush so um, what I'll talk you through what I do I think um, I've got the pressure quite low um, I put into the cup of the airbrush uh, about two drops of flow improver first but four drops of sky blue and then I keep adding it successive layers I add more white to that four drops of blue and then I put two drops of um, thinner in on top of that and then just mix it in the cup and um, I don't think I'll go all the way to white but uh, maybe if I, I swap to the brush when I when I get that light but I'm going to keep going now and I'll uh, I'll show you the results after each pass so I'm up to about three drops of white in there now and I'm just going to concentrate up towards the top now that's where most of the light is going to get it blend it into the, the strands that are coming up now as well. Yeah. I don't think I need to go any lighter so I'm going to leave it as, as that now. Okay so before we move on to the skull um, I cheated. I gave up using a brush. I did the rest of it with an airbrush um, and it was a lot quicker doing it that way. Um, I didn't even bother using the darker blue tones, I just used the uh, the sky blue added in the white for the top bits. Um, so I think it would look a bit better you know, with the, the light on the top. Anyway, what I've got is Warp Fiend Grey now. Uh, I'm just going to layer onto the skull because I want, to look at, want it to look um, different to the blue so just layering it on stay out of the shadows I'll stay away from the eyes for now as I want to try and do a like a glowing effect in there so this will probably take a couple of coats by the looks of it don't forget the teeth Okay, so what I've got now is a a mix of Warp Fiend Grey and uh, Vallejo's German Grey and I've made a wash. I'm going to put that on, uh, on the skull now because I want to do like light blue, white glowing eyes. I need a lot of contrast on the the skull so I need to go quite dark so I may do a couple of coats of this wash until I'm happy because um, it's okay having a bright eyeball as such um, what you need is a, a dark line after, you know around the the socket as well and then I can do a bit of glow outside the socket so I need to 
you know, have a contrasting colour on the skull, otherwise it's just gonna look really samey if, if I have a light if I have a light grey skull and then a light blue eye, you know, you're not gonna see the eye really, so I'm trying to go for contrast. So this will take a couple of coats. And, uh, We can carry on then. Okay, so we'll start highlighting the skull now with uh, the base coat now, Wolfine Grey. Picking out the uh, the more raised areas, more prominent. This bit's not quite dry there; it's just running in. Um, I'm going to pick out the teeth as well. So now I've got a 50-50 mix of the Warp Fiend Grey and Slanash Grey. And same again, just concentrate on the raised areas. And I just noticed that there are like striations on the, the horns. So I'm just going to pick them out. Really thin lines there. Coats, I think. Because um, he's got a ridge on the top of the nose, what I'm doing is I'll, I'll, I'll apply the paint but I'll pull it up towards the ridge um, so it appears lighter at the top. tend to pull the paint towards the uh, where I want the highlight. I really must fix that hole there because this this part of the, um, the magical fire should go into that hole there. But I'll need to fill that I think. Oh, this is going to look a bit silly. Alright, don't forget to pick out the teeth. Okay, maybe one more coat and I think we'll be there. Okay, next highlight is Slanesh Grey on its own. I'm conscious I'm not wanting to go too light because of the uh, the glowing eyes, but we'll see how this one looks. I'm trying to pick out the striations a bit more on on this pass because they're not looking bright enough yet. Uh, 
I'll just stick to the raised areas for this one. Put a dark line in between the teeth when I'm finished. It's a lot easier just to highlight them and then put in the shadow afterwards. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Alright, I've had enough of that now. Um, yeah, I don't want to go too bright yet because we'll, I'll see what the eyes look like. So, the plan with the eyes, I probably won't be able to do it on camera, so I'll tell you. Um, the pupil is going to be white. I've got like a nice light blue in there in the eye socket already, if you can see that, hopefully. What I'm going to do, I'm going to dot a little bit of white in there. Then I'm going to go darker around the outer part of the socket. And then I'm going to go light blue um, uh, outside of that dark line. So we get like a glowing effect then. Um, most people tend to forget to do the, the dark line because you need to get uh, a nice bit of contrast in there. So I'll, I think I'll start with a dark line and I'll, uh, I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll carry on the stages after that. Okay, so we've got the dark line in there now. What I've done is if you have a look at your own like uh, eye socket and you'll see a bit just underneath the eyebrow where where the arch of the eye is that's that's where you want to end the dark line so I've gone inside the socket but I haven't gone on to the eyebrow because the eyebrow is going to be lighter yeah? um, and make sure you fill right the way around so what I'm going to do now is dot an eye in there or a, a pupil I'm going to use white. I don't usually use white for eyes, but um, I'm going to on this occasion because I want contrast. And I may need to swap to a smaller brush, but we'll see how we go out and get on. I'm using a size one Windsor and Newton um, because they have lovely points. So I may need to put a little bit of light blue around that, but we'll see how we go. I think I might darken the blue in the in the eye, so maybe looking at like a, a blue glaze now. Okay, so I've got a blue glaze now, and I'm going to try and keep it away from the pupil. Um, and it may take a couple of coats. To get it where I want it to go. We'll see. Yeah, it's going to take a couple. I mixed a little bit of medium in with it because I thought it might be a bit too strong to start with, but I'm happy with the strength. It just needs a few coats just to build it up. Okay, so I'm gonna while that's drying because I want to redefine the. The pupil later on. What I've got now is the sky blue that is in effect around the outside of the eye. Um, I've made a really thin mix of just that and just a little bit of white and I'm just gonna do some highlights on the outer side of the eyebrow just to reinforce that glow effect. But don't go into that uh, dark line area that you created earlier. I think I've got too much white in this, so I might put a bit more blue in for the second coat. Mm. 
So we're getting there with the highlights. Um, I didn't like it on the eyebrow, so I'm trying to bring it back to what it was before on the Bob Fiend grey colour. But um, I've got the sky blue now. And I'm just going to start glazing it on. So the lower um, parts of the eyelids. Remember I said about pushing the pushing the paint into where you want the lightest area because we want the obviously if there's glow in the the lighter bits are going to be closer to the eye rather than further down the skull. If you do get too close um, to the grey part, and just wet your brush and push it in. Um, so I'm going to give this skull another highlight, and I'm going to sort the teeth out next. So with the teeth, I've got like a dark grey now, and I'm just going to put a line where the gum is. Separate the, uh, the teeth from anything else. And then I'm going to just highlight the teeth and I'll leave it like that, I think. I don't want to do too good a job on the teeth because that will distract you away from the eyes. And back to the slash grey for the, the highlights on the Head. I might add a little bit of white to this just to lighten things up a bit. So I've given the, the skull another highlight with a slash grey with a little bit of white in it and just picked out the odd bit here and there. Um, with the, the socket what I've done is I've, I've added a, a few more layers of the, the sky blue but I've been pushing it in towards the black line. If you go over the black line just wet your brush and just take it away again. Um, but then, once I'd done that, I got some uh, blue glaze ready. And what I'll do then, I'll come away from the light area towards the, the rest of the snout. So it just gives it a little bit of, a little bit of blue there. So don't go anywhere near the, the brightest bit. Go about, a, well, about halfway between the brightest bit and the end the edge of where you started highlighting It'll pull the blue away from the light area and do that a couple of times and it should start should start to see a nice bluey part to the, uh, the snout there and then you've got the glow of the eye alright I think I think I'm going to leave it there for now um, I'm not entirely sure whether I should paint the, the base grey or not, but I'll see what he looks like when I finish the uh, the main man. So for now, that's the, the end of part one. Okay, so there we are. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Uh, any dramas, get in touch in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, especially if you've got any requests for something you know you need doing or need help with, give us a shout. Um, so that's it for now. We'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.